All right, we're here with Joe Milton, big-time quarterback from Tennessee, now New England Patriots, latest quarterback choice in the 2024 NFL Draft. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Thank you for having me. All right, cool, man. So listen, man, uh, let's talk to you first, man, about a person, man. When did you start this journey on wanting to play football and all of that? Uh, well, I got my first football at the age of two. And then uh, after that, uh, I started like playing with my older cousins in front of my grandma house. And then, um, you know, playing around with them, playing football, them tackling me. And as far as like me throwing the ball, uh, I was always the, uh, you know, just the, the, the local area quarterback. Um, as far as like for my cousins, I was always on their team. I never played any other position. They always wanted me at quarterback. Just, just, just because we was related, so the fact that I threw it in the ball, so uh, you know it was great. So my dream started at the age of four of um, like me just playing, wanting to play NFL football or football in general. All right, now you coming from Pahokee, right? Yeah. By way of Orlando, so a lot of people don't know this, or you might know this. I was his, actually his high school head football coach uh -huh. in Orlando at Olympia. Uh, you know, the running joke is that when I got the job, that I brought you with me. <laughs> huh? Is that true? No, that's not true. Let's set the record straight. Huh? It's not true at all. That's not true at all, right? I actually got there before you. You actually got, you did. You got there like, what, November, and I came in February. Yeah. Um, and so through that time in high school, you know, you playing in high school, man, I remember your first talk was, I'm a wide receiver, coach. <laughs> Bro, I'm glad you said something about that, because that's not what I said. Uh, what you say? I said there are some DBs out here that's talking trash, so I'm going to do them and at receiver. And then you was like, oh, no, nah, you're not playing receiver. You're going to play quarterback. That's right. Nah, man. I never wanted to play receiver. I just wanted to, you know, back at home, man, that's what we do. You know what I mean? You talk Travis, you're going to route you up. So. You do it all. I get yeah, it. Like I that. get it. And so, like I said, I mean, you know, when we got there, we created a, a bond. And I remember, you know, being a young ninth grader, about this big at the time, you won 245-pound Joe <laughs> at this time. What you, about 245 now? Yeah, like 245. Yeah, he was probably about 180 <laughs> at that time, man. But, uh, you know, like I said, we, we had that bond, and I remember being on those office late. You'd be like, Coach, I could, you'll take me home. And I'd be like, all right, check with your mom first. Yeah. And uh, that's how I really started, man, take you home every day. You actually stayed really right next door to me almost, man. But, uh, I mean, that was fun, man. How, how was your high school experience? Uh, I feel like it was, it was different, um, you know, coming from Pahokee and then moving to like a big city, uh, it was different just because of the people that was there. Like uh, being in Pahokee, you ain't see too many white people. So coming here and, and moving to a bigger city, it was just something that you had to adjust to. Um, and me, me being the person that I am, of, you know, finding ways and uh, going by your saying, champions find a way. It's just like, you know, I had to adapt quick. Um, just just because I was going to be the guy and I am deep down inside that I wanted to be the guy. So I had to adjust fast. But um, high school was pretty fun, though, you know, played varsity, started varsity for three years. Um, you know, it was it was fun. I had some great days and, you know, I, if I can go back, I would for one game. Um, definitely Riverview game. Uh, <laughs> I definitely go back to that game. Uh, but. You know, it was fun. It was a great experience. Um, you know, thank, thank to Olympia for taking me in and, you know, allowing me to showcase my talents for me and the team and my family. So it was great, for sure. That's good, man. So talking about you now as a person, um, you know, you you get a lot of hype as being the quarterback, of course. But what is it that Joe likes to do on his off time outside of football? Because, you know, the people want to know. Everybody know you can throw a football yeah. a country mile, and we'll get into that. But what does Joe do? Off the grid iron. Uh, I like to play my drums. Um, I got a drum pad. Uh, I got like four sets of drumsticks, uh, different colors actually. Okay. Um, I watch I watch a lot of movies. Um, Drumline is my favorite movie. Uh, so I watch Drumline a couple times. I know every line. Uh, I know every beat off Drumline. I can play it like the back of my hand with my eyes closed. What? Um, and then you know, other than that, I like to call home watch my sister uh, play around. Okay. Two-year-old sister, so, you know, she growing up, so I like to see her grow up just because I'm not there physically. So being able to do that, but now that I'm in the NFL and my family will be close, so it'll be special. All right, knowing you talking about family, your sister, your mom is big, your grandmother's, all of that stuff. And I know I remember hearing your mother in the stand, go, Joe, Joe, right? And uh, I know she's a big part of your life as well as your family in general. You see, we got Shorty back here playing football. 
What does that mean, uh, family, to you? What does that mean? Uh, it's special. Just because, uh, just for me, my immediate family, we're always close. Uh, every time we get together, it's always going to be a great time, uh, no matter what. And there's times where we don't even talk about football. They just enjoy that my presence is there with them. Um, and that's what I enjoy the most, just because they always going to be them. Uh, you can take them anywhere, but they always just going to be themselves, no matter what. So just, you know, being around them made me feel special because they know how hard I work and what I went through. And just for them to even like witness this um, mm -hmm. and be a part of the family is special. Now, I know when we did your commitment video to Michigan, you gave a special shout out to your great grandmother, if I'm not mistaken. Um, what do you think she would be saying right now if she could see her baby? Her grandma and baby. Her grandma and baby. Uh, I don't know. I think my grandma would be lost to hers for sure. Good. That's awesome, man. All right. So, again, as you get ready to get ready for this journey, uh, we already know that you've been drafted to New England. As you get ready to get ready for this journey, what is Joe going to do be between the time now and the time that you leave to get yourself mentally prepared? Uh, mentally prepared? I wouldn't say I do anything mentally. You know, I just keep doing what I've been doing, um, praying, um, you know, just uh, meditating. I do a lot of meditating. Uh, you know, I lay down and do it. Um, it was a breathing control exercise that I learned through the pre-draft process. Uh, and keep playing my drums. You know, my drums keep me calm. So. Just being able to, you know, keep that mental, keep my head level, you know, be where my feet at. I feel like that's the most important thing is after you've got to learn. You, know, you can't solve everything. You can't do everything. You can't fix every problem. And it's not going to happen overnight. So that was some of the things I had to learn in my early days, my early life. So as um, far as, like, what I'm going to do now is just get my get back in shape. Um, when I say that, just, just you know, start back throwing more. I took a little break from throwing. So getting back right, get my feet back underneath me, um, you know, just get ready for the moment. Uh, I did some of the Patriots playbook at the Senior Bowl, so just being able to look back through it, look back through formations and personnel, you know, get my mind back going. All right, now here you talk about faith and mental and stuff like that. How big is faith? How big is that in, in your life? How, like, like, what does that really mean for you? Yeah, uh, so I grew up in the church. Um, my great granny, you know, she instilled that in us. Um, so that was special, uh, you know. Family used to go to church a lot every Sundays. Uh, my uncle's a pastor now, which is one of my grandma's sons. So, you know, just being able to just process all of that and understanding and trusting in God, you know, every step of the way. Um, you know, a lot of people just say it just to say it, but when you actually believe in it and you trust in his word, you know, a lot of things actually happen and you'll see it. Um, you know, it's not going to happen when you want it to, you know, but God always on time. So just what it means to me, it's a lot. Like, you know, just being able to just, you know, trust in him and trust in what the Bible says and what he wrote. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that, you know, a lot of people mess with the Bible, but just being able to trust in your Lord that you know um, and what, how he is and what he believes in. So. All right, now we're getting into the player part of this thing, man. We all know you started your career off at Michigan, finished up at Tennessee as a grad transfer. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Got to let that be known. <laughs> So you are a graduate of the University of Michigan? Yes, sir. All right, perfect, man. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about Michigan at first. Getting an opportunity to go up there. Of course, I was, you know, part of that process as well, being a high school coach. What was that experience like being at Michigan? Uh, it was different. Um, you know, that was another, another like, different time for me. Uh, it was way different than me moving from Polka to Orlando and going to a, a white school. It was way different. Like, excuse me, you had just a lot of different people. Um, and alongside of that, it was like trying to get the schoolwork down pat. Like a lot of people don't understand, but Michigan schoolwork is hard, like hard. Like a lot of people, you know, say it's regular math, but at Michigan, you call it Michigan math. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so two plus two, not four. Nah, not at Michigan. No, it's a little bit more. Okay. It's a little bit more diverse than that, but it's, you know, it was cool. You know, it was, it was different, but from the football side of it, uh, it was fun because I had to learn. Um, and I had to actually learn the playbook and how to learn it. So, you know, those moments of growing up um, through those phases was great to me. Um, you know, as far as like understanding coaching, understanding the business side of it um, before I actually got to Tennessee, but understanding the business side at Michigan and how things work and how people operate. You know, if you get hurt, you know, it's the next guy up or some people will say you're anchor sprain away from being a starter. So, you know, mm -hmm. just you know, just keep that in the back of your head and, you know, always want to put your best foot forward for sure. All right, real quick, just to stay here at Michigan for a quick second. 
I remember your first start was against Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I jump on the plane. I go see you play at Minnesota. Uh, you had a great game, man. I guess my question is, what does it feel like to start on that level? Yep. Yeah, first start, right? Practice is practice. You get accustomed to it. But what does it feel like to now, okay, you got to start. You running out there. What is it like? Is it gut-wrenching? Is it nervous? Is it what? I can't even describe how you feel. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit different in high school, right? I still feel the same to this day, every game. Uh, but I feel like if you don't have that feeling, then you didn't prepare how you're supposed to um, throughout that week. So, you know, having that feeling, you should feel good about it. Um, just because you you don't want to you don't wanna mess up the good plays you already done did in practice or you done studied real well. So, uh, but it's a feeling that you can't describe or explain. Uh, it's just like a blackout, like, you know, it's a lot of people in the stadium, but you can't hear nobody. It's right. Just, you know, like how movies, you know, have a dark stadium and just the stadium lights and you just walk on the field. That's how it feels, for sure. Yeah, it's almost like you stuck in time, right? Like, I've, we've been in those situations. I've been in those situations where it's actually so loud till it's quiet. Right. Right? Like, the, it, like everybody's screaming, 100,000 people screaming, but it's total silence. Yep. And everything moving in slow motion. Right. And it's almost like an out-of-body experience, like you're looking at yourself yeah. moving. I, I get it, man. I totally understand that, man. All right, now you decide to make the transition to Tennessee right. with Coach Josh Heupel. Now, Coach Josh Heupel was recruiting you heavily, yeah. not at Tennessee, so we ain't break no rules, when he was at Missouri. Mm -hmm. So when he was at Missouri, he spent quite a few hours in my office mm -hmm. talking about you. And I know you guys had some talks. What was that like making that transition to Tennessee from Michigan? It was different, man. Tennessee was was known for a part of school. Football team wasn't good. Um, so just him alone just going there and then breaking his staff was like, it just amazed me because, you know, they stuck together. And I wonder why, you know. So when you get there, it's like, it's like you're going home, like you back at home. So, like, everything is so welcoming, like, the coaches, they had, they young. So like at Michigan, it was all old coaches. Like Coach Harbaugh is old, um, Ben McDaniel was old. Like, you know, they all old. Um, you know, they've been around again. Meaning, meaning, meaning that they've been around for been a while, right? Okay, I got you. you. I mean, but when you go to Tennessee, you got the young coaches where everything just feel like, you know, cool. Like everybody want to joke around with you. Everybody want to feel off your energy, feed off your energy. Everybody want to be around you. Coaches, they talking about like home stuff, like, you know, their families come up there, everybody love you, everybody, you know, it's all genuine. But, you know, Michigan was a little bit different, but yeah. Yeah, now I saw when you got there, right? Um, you came in, Hendon Hooker came in, and it was always a big story about your guys' relationship, mm -hmm. right? You guys coming in, actually embraced each other uh, and learned off one another. How was that relationship now with him having a year of experience in the league? And then how was it? actually at Tennessee at that time? Um, at Tennessee, it was good. You know, uh, we moved, we ended up moving in together. Uh, you know, it was cool. Uh, I remember telling you about my freshman year at Michigan when they tried to let me move in with Shea, and I was like, nah, forget that, I ain't moving in. But, uh, <laughs> and what did I say? Yeah. I said, man, do it, you learn from them. But that's the competitive spirit, right? right? I'm the man. I feel like I could do this, this, and the other. But you don't realize you can actually – you know, sponge off these guys and learn some stuff. Definitely. And that's maturity, right? Yep. I get it. I totally it get it. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Hendon was more, when I say mature, he was more like, you know how to study better than I did uh, as far as like, you know, what to study um, when you go home. Um, so I just picked up some of his habits and I made them mine and I just did it my own way. So our relationship was, it was special. You know, we had our own set routine um, throughout the week. Um, he'll study one part of the film, I'll study the other. Then we'll put our notes together, and by the time the game comes, it'll, it'll basically feel like we already done played. But, you know, living together was just like, was a, <laughs> the topping on the cake, you know, for the team. Sure. Like, we made the team better um, every day just because people saw how well we bonded and, you know, how well we treated each other. And, you know, we was always about our business. Every step we take, it was always with a, our chest out, you know, always had our chin high. Um, even on our down days, he may be down or I may be down. We picked each other up, so the team bought into that. All right, so speaking of this, I guess for lack of a better term, your coming out party was the Orange Bowl in Miami. Yeah. At the crib, crib. for those that don't know. That's the crib, that's Miami, yeah. for those that don't know. So for all the New England people out there, when we say the crib, that's the Miami. Crib. But 
that was your coming out party. I was at that game. Mm -hmm. You lit that thing up. Everybody was talking about you from ESPN to Fox Sports. How did it feel, man, to have, like, you know, you come out, I guess you could call it pressure, maybe not. But how did you feel to have the kind of performance that you did have winning the actual MVP? Yeah, um, I feel like it was a regular day. When I say that, um, I just studied well. Um, I prepared myself, you know, for that game. Uh, we had a, a long time to prepare, so every week that, you know, leading up to that game, you know, I treated it like it was game week. You know, I watched the tape, I prepared the same way we do as it was game week, and I made it happen. You know, every time we repped against their defense, I made sure that I played it like a game. So, you know, every rep that I took that week or, or leading up to that week, I treated it like a game. So by the time the game come, it was easy for me. Um, and, you know, just knowing where everybody was at, making sure everybody good on their assignments, you know, just putting all the, putting everything on my back and making, making sure it happened. All right, watching you every Saturday, man, I had a chance to actually – see your game improve and how you mature throwing the ball i used to always tell you if you throw it early you ain't got to throw it hard and i see that man you you actually understand that throwing guys open there was a lot of talk about touch and when i'm looking at these games i'm like this dude got touch now this dude got put air on the ball you know when to put fire behind it you know when to show off the rocket arm um what do you think coach hypo taught you the most through this process of those those two years that you would have um Calm feet, you know, being in the ground, uh, having all your spikes in the ground, being able to drive forward, um, you know, just being able to deliver to your target uh, and be open to your target, you know, driving through, um, using your back, be using your back foot, uh, your back leg, and making sure you drive through the target, target, and always follow through for sure. So when people talk about touch, because strength we already know, that's check the box, but when people talk about uh, touch passes, right? And oh, he's got to have touch and accuracy. What is? What do you say to that? Uh, I mean, is it catchable or not? Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's all from the lower body. You got to be able to control your lower body. Um, your upper body should be calm as uh, calm as ever. Um, your lower body do all the work, and then your upper body is just the trigger. So just being able to just, I meant the barrel. Upper body is just the barrel. So being able to just control it, and you'll be accurate for sure. Gotcha. All right, real quick, man. That last game that you played at Tennessee. You ran through the power T. I think that's what they call it. What did you think, man? What did you think when, when you say, okay, this is it, baby? What, what was going through your mind when you ran through? Uh, man, a lot of things. Uh, just that my college moments coming to the end. Um, and, you know, I didn't know what was – I knew what was next, but, you know, it's the uncertain. Like, you never know what can happen. Um, so, I was just focused on the next moment, you know, being where my feet was at. Uh, don't think about the next play. Um, just being in that play in that moment at that time uh, and only thinking about that no matter what. Now, I noticed that Tennessee, the community of Tennessee volunteers embraced you from Wendy's. You had your own seven on, was it seven uh, for seven? I don't know, man. Tell them to fix Oh, that. tighten up. Fighting, tight. Okay, hold on. I thought it was Wendy's. McDonald's. Who said that last night? Somebody said that. McDonald's. It was McDonald's? Big what was man. it called? What you mean? It was, called, it was called seven for seven? No, nah, I wouldn't call no seven What was it called? Man. Joe's Mill, Milton Mill. Okay, I didn't know. All right, let's start over. Co players mess no, up too. I ain't starting over nothing, man. You got my meal wrong. McDonald's, get you a Big Mac, a large fry, add bacon to your Big Mac with a sweet and sour sauce on the side with a large sweet tea. You feel me? If you're feeling like me, you can get two Big Mac, add bacon. McDonald's, Coach A's football at Gmail for sponsorship. <laughs> Make sure you go ahead and hit your boy up, dog. That's all I'm saying, sure. Really. You're going to be the only one getting paid up here. <laughs> no, I'm not with you. All right. Uh, so on this, on a serious note, if you had to say one thing to the Tennessee Vol Nation, what would you what would you say to them as they embraced you as you came from Michigan to Tennessee? Uh, y'all embraced me, so thank you. I'm so thankful of y'all for allowing me <laughs> inside of the uh, kneeling. Um, I appreciate that. So go Vols, but thankful to y'all. Um, y'all rocked out every Saturday for sure. All right, so now you're in the prospect phase of this thing. The NFL draft is coming up. You have declared, um, and you have to go through this whole process of training, getting prepared for the combine and everything else. Mm -hmm. How does that process start? Do you go out and look for an agent? Do you interview guys? How does that work? Uh, well, usually during the midseason, a lot of agents hit you up on Instagram, slide in your DMs, try to take you out to dinner and things like that. So I didn't do none of that, to be honest to be real with you. <laughs> I waited till after the season to try to pick an agent or even talk to him. I didn't talk to nobody. 
my manager made sure that didn't happen. So they were still texting me, still trying to call my phone. Um, one agent got my phone number from some female. Like uh -oh. it was crazy. Uh, but nah, I don't. I waited till after the season. So after the when the season got over, then I just had some Zoom calls. You know, as far as like which agency is taking how many quarterbacks in that uh, in that agency group and. If there was an agency that wasn't taking no quarterback except for one, then I want those agencies. So I just narrowed my list down like that. And gotcha. How good was the marketing? Good, man. All right. So then I know you went out to California to train a little bit. Talk to me about that training. How was how was training for the combine different than training from the game? If there is a difference, uh, I feel like it's more. <laughs> it's different because like you have to be more in tune with your body, like into yourself. Uh, and when I say that, it's like. You have to understand yourself. Like, you ain't got no coach. You ain't got no mama. You ain't got your daddy there. You ain't got your grandma there. Your cousins. Nobody there to, like, wake you up. Like, I was in the Airbnb by myself. Like, just me. Nobody there. So, like, it's how bad do you really want it? Like, you know, are you going to get up in the morning and, and go do what you say you want to do? Um, do you want to show up every day the same? And my energy, the way that I carry myself, you know, people feed off that. And no matter who you are, like you get around me, you're gonna feed off my energy. So right. I had to show up every day, you know, who I am, like happy, uh, like I'm blessed to be there, like I'm happy to be there. So, you know, it was a challenge, you know, cause some days not gonna be, you're not gonna be the same. You're not sure. gonna wake up the same person. You might wake up on the wrong side of the bed, you never know. So just being able to just show up every day, work hard and your body gonna be tired. So all you young athletes out there and ready for the draft, your body for sure gonna be tired. Now you talk about being tired. I remember we talking on the phone and you said, Coach, they hook all these things up to you. They know where everything goes, the electronics. The evolution of the game has changed in so far as the science behind yeah. it, right? It's not just go out there and throw passes. They actually know how much weight you put on the back mm -hmm. foot, how much torque you created with your torso. Yeah. What is that like to sit there and look at yourself on a computer screen and get analyzed by a computer and they say, nah, you're doing that wrong? Yeah, I mean, it's wild, but like the way that technology is today, like how that biometric actually showed the skeleton of my body and show how much force I was putting into my front foot instead of my back foot when I dropped back. It was just different. Like you just look at it and be like, well, like this whole time I could have been doing this better and I could have been more accurate this way or like trust. Well, let's talk about Joe uh, first. But so in college, I was trap heavy. Um, when I say that, I was using more arm than I was supposed to. Okay. So, like, when people say I was throwing the ball hard and things like that, it may seem like that to them, but, you know, I was just using more upper body than I needed to. So when I did my biometric, it showed that I was using no lower body at all. Like, no lower body at all. Only time I used just all body, on. Just all on. So only time I used my lower body was on my deep balls. So when I did that, uh, like, right after that day we did biometrics, um, within two weeks, I was using all, all lower body. Arm wasn't tired. So in college, my lat used to get sore. Mm -hmm. My mom used to come to my house, my apartment, and rub my lat. Right. Uh, I didn't even have to ask her. Oh, she was always doing that. But, um, no, it was, it was cool to see, um, you know, just from a computer telling you that, you know, how to throw a ball. It right, was, right, was right. Wild, for sure. All right, real quick, as you now enter the combine, right, everybody again talking about Rocket Arm Joe, how far you can throw the ball. As I looked at the combine, there was a point where you kind of, you know, the play action, you stepped back and you waited a little bit and the commentators brought that up. Mm -hmm. Was that intentional to say, hey, man, you can't, <laughs> I'm going to let this thing ride or what? Uh, yeah, I feel like it was intentional. Um, I did it on purpose for sure. Just to let you know that nobody can't outrun me. Uh, <laughs> they can't outrun the ball, the rock. can't outrun my arm, man, for sure. Got you. Yeah. All right, so that, hey, that's telling all you receivers, especially you NFL cats. Don't look back, dog. Don't, Just keep running, huh? Don't stop running, bro. Try. Old school coaching term. Go knock your head off the goal post. Yes, loud. Huh? Yes, loud. I love it. All right, so now that you go through this combine stuff and you get rankings, now we're getting into the draft part of this deal. Um, as you looked at the draft and you went through this draft process, what were your feelings going into that day? Uh, same way I feel today. I'm number one. Okay. I mean that. Uh, I don't feel like nobody was better than me in this draft. Uh, no matter what, um, you can choose somebody first. You can choose them last. Sure. No matter who it is, uh, I stand on, I stand on all my words. I feel like sure. I'm the best person in this draft, regardless. Uh, no cool. matter what. So, um, but leading up to it, it was cool. You know, just my mindset was like, you know, just 
it is what it is, no matter what, because uh, no matter what, I'm going to show up. Uh, I've been a two prestigious program, and I showed up every day. Good. Now, knowing that you're going into this, of course, you have your agent and other people around you that's in the business aspect of this. Um, what teams do you think we're going to pick you? Or did you think New England was going to pick you prior to this? Uh, after our Zoom call, kind of, um, just because the quarterback coach and the offense coordinator was like, we love the way that you, uh, we love your life story. We love the way that you uh, fought through adversity. Uh, we just love the way that you just compete every day on the field. Like, you're, you're talented. Uh, you can throw the ball country mile. Mm -hmm. They actually said that. And, um, you know, your, your arms is gifted. Like, you know, um, you got some things that people can't coach. So um, it gave me a little heads up. But then again, it was kind of like, nah, uh, would the Dolphins do it? They don't have a backup. Or uh, would the Giants do it? They only got uh, Daniel Jones. Or um, is Baltimore going to do it? They only got Lamar. Um, so just you know, through it all, I'm like, man, I don't know where I can end up. So whoever called me, just called me. All right, so as we sitting here waiting on this, you know, we were sitting here, you know, um, and I remember you kept saying, I'm just waiting on this call. Something to that effect. Yeah. What were you saying? Uh, I'm just one call away. <laughs> all right, who is that? What was that? I don't know who's saying that. It was balling. That's all you needed, huh? That's all I needed. So the owner, Robert Kraft, gets on the phone. What does he have to say? Uh, he was just talking about, you know, he's just ready to see my arm tally in person. Uh, heard that I had the strongest arm in the draft. I said, no, nah, I got the strongest arm in the country. He was like, you know, just... You know, you heard about my Michigan story, heard about my Tennessee story, how I competed, uh, showed up every day. So, you know, he's just ready to see that in person and see me compete because um, they drafted Drake late third pick overall. So right. he's ready to see me compete with him. Good, man. So real quick, as you get ready to go in this, when are you prepared to leave? This will probably come out right around the same time, but are you prepared to go ahead and head to Foxborough, Massachusetts? Uh, it ain't cold, yeah. yeah. And let me tell you this. I've been to Boston, that area before this time of year. Pack a jacket, my man. Yeah. Trust me, we in Florida, look. We sitting by the pool, shorts on, t-shirt, flip-flop. But I done been to Boston before that time of year. Yeah. I bought my, bought me a jacket at Macy's because I had on shorts, wrong yeah. stuff. I got me some Montclair's, there you go. Some Montclair's? Yeah. I don't know what that is, but I still got a members only jacket. I'm old school. All right, so now with, with New England uh, being the pick, you're getting ready to head that way. What do you have to say to New England Patriot fan base? Uh, Y'all gonna get the best version of me every day. Uh, you know, I'm going to show up, I'm going to compete, uh, and never going to stop, man. You know, show up every day trusting God and make sure the team, make sure the team believe in God uh, every day. And you just got to get 1% better every day, no matter what. Um, we can't win a Super Bowl tomorrow. Um, let's start with what you're doing right now. So, you know, come in, work. Um, let's trust in each other, trust each other, and let's go work, man. That's all it is.